Okay guys, it is Truck Arrest Matthew back for another video. In and today we're going to be talking about small fixed blades versus small folding blades for outdoors, bushcraft, and which you should choose if you're thinking about running a secondary blade to help complement your primary and do some of the more fine tasks that a primary fixed blade might not be able to do. Now before we jump into this video, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more Alaskan content in the truck and outdoors. So let's get into it. So while we are going to be talking about folding blades replacing primary fixed blades here in the future, so in this video we're going to be taking a look at the pros and cons of a folding blade versus a smaller fixed blade in the wilderness setting and which one makes more sense to carry overall. Now I'm not going to lie, my stance on fixed blades as I've mentioned in other videos is kind of different because a lot of people gravitate towards large bushcrafting knives or survival knives when they prefer when they go outside. Knives that tend to lend their hands better to camp tasks as opposed to maybe more field tasks. So a lot of people end up going towards much larger knives and I'm actually a fan of smaller knives. Knives within the kind of sub the sub 9 inch range. Uh, you know things like 8.8 .8 inches to 9 inches itself is kind of the sweet spot for me when it comes to a general purpose kind of bushcrafting fixed blade and I have videos talking about that. Now that being said I actually really dislike most small fixed blades for bushcrafting. Now don't get me wrong I do think that there are good purposes especially for everyday carry and certain environments do lend their hand pretty well to having smaller fixed blades. I own quite a few smaller fixed blades smaller than this one and larger than this uh, tops MSK, but by and large, I'm not a huge fan of smaller fixed blades, things like micro fixed blades, things such as the tops MSK, things such as the, things such as the SE Azula 2. Um, these are good knives uh, for what they are, but I'm not the largest fan of them when it comes down to bushcrafting and outdoors. And the primary reason why that is, is goes back to the size and kind of how easy it is to carry. When you look at having a secondary knife in the wilderness, these are knives that are not frontline users. They're not going to be the thing that you're grabbing to fix every problem that comes up. As it is, and as we've discussed in the past, I think that knives already serve a kind of ancillary important but ancillary role in the wilderness kind of arena because I think things like hatchets, tomahawks, axes, and saws are going to be your primary workhorses. Maybe less on tomahawks, but certainly hatchets, axes, and saws are going to be your primary workhorses. They're going to be getting most of what you need done when it comes to building shelters, building uh, building shelters, building different types of things around your camp, and of course processing firewood for sustainable heat and cooking applications. Now once again, I do think knives are important to that role, but by and large, they're not going to be doing the lion's share of the work. That being said, they're going to be tools that you're drawing on less and less often. And so when you start running secondary knives, things that serve as a backup to the primary, you're going to be using those even less than your primary. And so that's where I get to why I think fixed blades, smaller fixed blades like the SC Azula and Tops MSK and others are kind of detracted or why I don't have a preference for them is that they are heavier, they're larger because you cannot fold this, you know, there's no way of changing this size, you know, it's, it is the size it is, and then, you know, in order to properly and safely carry it, you have to have a sheath which only increases that overall size, and as it stands, if you want something that is, you know, a decent small size to carry, you know, you're looking at a very small blade length and very small handle length. I mean, this um, Benchmade bug out here is already 
a bit longer, as you can see, but because it is a folder, when I fold it, once again, not adding a sheath, not adding any extra length, it is now, you know, not quite half the size of the SC Azula, but it is about the same size as the handle of the Azula. So when it's folded and in my pocket, it's the size of the handle of this Azula, but when I uh, unfold the blade or when I open the blade it is now longer and more serviceable than the SC Azula. Not to mention because this is not a fixed blade it is lighter weight and it is a little bit thinner and more easy to pack and so it comes in a better so it comes in a better package overall in a more useful uh, more fieldable kind of use. Now the other thing that people are going to invariably bring up whenever we start talking about fixed blades versus folders is the robustness or the sturdiness of the fixed blade. And while I don't doubt that a fixed blade is far stronger than even the strongest folding knife, uh, the reality is with these types or sizes of blades, we're not going to be using them to do very hardcore tasks. So therefore, the robustness, rigidity, or strength of a folder is fine. This is not going to, the strength that this locking mechanism has is more than enough than anything that you're realistically going to encounter. And if you do just so happen to have to, you know, take some hits on this or baton it lightly, something like this axis lock is going to be able to hold back that pressure just fine. So, that is the primary reason why I prefer folders in a wilderness setting as a secondary knife. They are very practical, very easy, and very intuitive to carry and just throw in a pocket and forget that you even have it. And then, should you need that secondary knife for whatever task or purpose, you can pull it out and use it with ready ease. Another thing that I will bring up when it comes to fixed blades that I dislike is, as you can kind of see with this as with this SC Azula, is it is a neck knife. And my primary bushcrafting knife, the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter, is also a neck knife. So carrying two neck knives would not only be very silly, but very impractical to have, you know, like two knives juggling on your chest. And so part of carrying a fixed blade is, once again, it's harder. This is not something that folds easily to, you know, go in a pocket. You have to, you know, either make a necklace like this to wear it as a neck knife, or you have to manufacture some kind of belt loop, or, you know, it may, uh, it might come with a belt loop on the uh, sheath. But that being said, you know, if it's on the belt, if it's on the neck, that's taking up real estate that other more important tools could be. Uh, therefore, especially something like this little knife, I would never dream of carrying on my belt because, once again, in other videos I've talked about, you know, my belt is prime real estate for carrying things like my personal survival kit, carrying my uh, handgun, carrying um, different bags or pouches for collection of natural materials, and so on and so forth. And so I do not like to clutter my belt at all with unnecessary or arbitrary things that I don't really need. Other things that you might consider or other reasons you might go for folders as well. So I've talked about some of the additional downsides to fixed blades and so an additional pro to folding knives is of course multi-tools. Now this is a Swiss Army uh, knives this is a Victorinox Huntsman here in particular, but there are many different Victorinox out there. There are also, of course, Leathermans, and by and large, I usually prefer Leatherman, but either way you look at it, you know, something like this uh, Victorinox Huntsman, you know, has multiple blades, so it has a longer blade and a shorter blade for additional carving abilities. So, you know, you have a longer and smaller blades to help you with uh, carving and processing of wood or other things. And you also have different tools. You know, of course, you know, a smaller saw in there. And of course, you know, different uh, can openers, bottle openers for whatever you might need. And while not all of these tools might be useful to you in the moment, um, having the additional tools is certainly never a bad idea. And, you know, having something like this 
weighs about the same as this whole package here. It is a little bit heftier, but once again, you can see that this easily slips into a pocket, whereas this does not easily slip into a pocket. So even if the weight is similar, once again, you're also getting additional features and tools that you can field in your uh, adventures, but also, uh, you know, still the package and size of this is far easier to manage and negotiate. So I definitely say that if you are going to run a secondary blade, you know, fixed blades are awesome. And if it is in your methodologies or if you, this is what you use, there's nothing wrong with having an additional blade secondary. Um, one good way that I've actually ran smaller uh, fixed blades like these is off of a piggyback sheath. So if I do have to run a secondary knife, especially to complement a larger and more cumbersome knife. Uh, the piggyback style where you have, you know, two sheaths or you have a sheath and then, you know, the sheath of the smaller blade is attached to the sheath of the larger blade is probably one of the better ways to do it. That way, it's not really taking up additional space on your belt or on your neck. You still have the same basic package. You just have the addition of the extra tool. But... Once again, you know, even looking at that, it's still easier to just throw one of these in your pocket. And speaking from a realist standpoint uh, of looking at these knives and saying, you know, what do I really want to carry um, and what ends up in my pocket? You know, am I really grabbing an MSK and putting it in my pocket or am I grabbing this bug out? And nine times out of ten, I'm grabbing the bug out because it's just so much easier to throw this in the pocket for a tool that may not see much use that's naturally more attractive. So anyways, hopefully this has been helpful and insightful in kind of helping you distinguish, you know, what you should choose, whether it be fixed blades or folders. And I actually really do enjoy carrying folders quite a bit, especially outdoors. And that's why I'm actually going to be doing a video, taking a look and kind of discussing, you know, replacing some of the larger or maybe mainstay kind of uh, f fixed blades with, you know, a little bit more robust, a little bit heavier duty uh, folding knives, things that, you know, are still, you know, many of the same pros uh, to this uh, folding knife, but, you know, replacing your main bushcrafting knife. Do I know how, what I'll think about that yet? Not quite, but it is a very interesting topic and something that I want to look at a little bit more. So, Anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.